station to bring the people together and spread an alternative message from the mainstream. They tried to silence us. They tried to hack us. But we carried on. You cannot silence the truth. You cannot enslave freedom. You cannot stop a good idea. You cannot stop Dark City Radio. The crew is now bigger and stronger than ever before. We will not be kept off the airwaves. We will continue. This is not our radio. This is your radio. This is Dark City Radio. This is your Dark City. 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 This is your Dark City, this is your dark city Radio. Welcome to Be Decoded on the Arc City Radio tonight. Uh, very special uh, Be Decoded uh, with my very special guest, uh, Bob. Are you there? Uh, I am, Jabba, yes. <laughs> um, I, we're going to talk about the Arc of the Arc City. All right. And uh, uh, I, I want to uh, ask Bob what the arc means for him, for the uh, dark city, because I think there is more behind than only a radio. And uh, if somebody wants to join, tell uh, what uh, dark city or dark city radio is for him, please uh, on Skype, Bob's Backyard, uh, or... On the phone, plus four four one six one two nine eight zero oh, two nine eight. Um, if somebody from the crew want to join and say what uh, Dark City is for for him, um, please join. So Bob, please uh, can can you already? Um, Talk about how, how everything starts. I think uh, everything starts with uh, your backyard, I think, and uh, how we came to the radio. Um, well, I was born in 1964. No, he didn't mean that. He didn't mean that far back. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, well, I, yeah, I thought, okay, I suppose um, the Bob's backyard. The aquaponics, hydroponics is a good place to start, or a good place as any. Uh, I've worked with uh, indoor growing, and um, years previously, before I actually got um, did Bob's backyard, I built uh, a pool, a, a small little pool, a small pond, I mean a tiny pond, more like a, an ornate um, water feature really. Um, it was designed by my daughter. She said, I had a very small space, and she said she wanted a, a river, a waterfall, and a lake in a field. <laughs> um, so I, I built um, like a, well, it, uh, it's been called an earth gate since. Um, it, that's not what I had in mind when I built it. I actually looked at the structure of it. But yeah, I really do see what, what people are talking about. It does look like a, a, um, an entrance to, uh, you know, a, a tomb or a, or, a, or a gateway into something, you know, stone. Uh, and built on top of that, I, I just put other stones. So the stones above it became the waterfall, and um, it, it, it basically runs off the um, runs down the stones, which are my river, you see. Uh, in, in your backyard? Yeah, yeah, in this little corner. That's all it is, a corner. So I've got water being pumped up. It's trickling down uh, some stones. Um, there's my, the river for my, for my daughter, you see, um, and then it runs off the edge, and there's the waterfall into the, the pool below, just circulating round. And then because of when I was younger, my father had a, a pet shop, and I looked after the tropical fish and the fish there. I had knowledge of how to make things easier, really. Less work, Jabba. You know, mm. lazy man's pond. <laughs> so I, um, I, I planted it heavily um, around the 
the outside of it with a plant called Baby's Tears. Um, it's, it's like a, a very small ground cover plant. Um, it's supposed to be indoor plant. But again, uh, because of microclimate, you can get away with a lot when you're in the city. You, you've got to find the, advantage, the advantages. So what I, I've, I've done is I, I've created, um, in, from looking at it from the aquaponics point of view, um, that's what I've done. I've created an aquaponics system which is running in the corner. Um, I, I very rarely needed to clean the water. Uh, maybe once a year I'd, I'd get the silt out of the bottom. And all I had running with it was um, a, a bacterial filter. That's it, a tiny bacterial filter. And, and over the years, the plants get more, um, and the bacterial filter itself now is just a house, really, for the bacteria. So, yeah, that was the first one. That's, that's kind of how the backyard started. Then I was in a conversation uh, with some gentlemen at um, uh, a VIP coffee shop in Manchester um, where you can go and get coffee uh, and smoke cannabis. And people don't think these places exist because it's illegal in Britain, but they do, and they do exist. This is like a, a dispensary which is totally unlicensed and unknown about unless you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, then you ain't going to go there. Uh, and uh, I was in this place, and a conversation said that um, aquaponics didn't work. And I was like, aquaponics? What's aquaponics? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, um, it's when you use fish to produce nitrates and to do that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 that works. He went, no, it doesn't. Well, it does. It does. It doesn't. So it was one of them. Um, and I said, well, all right, and it doesn't work, but I can prove it does. So it was kind of a bit of a challenge. So all I did was I put, uh, I got a bit convoluted about it at first, you know, um, but really all I did was at the end of it is I put a box on and put veg in it. It's the same thing. I mean, the same, exactly the same system still runs now in the corner. I, I've just increased the size of the loop and the volume of water. But, but you had plants uh, already. Yeah, had, yeah, I already had plants. They just you couldn't eat them. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's like, and, and in that, it, I, the argument was they had to be edible plants. You see, that was the. Old. I mean, to me, it was like, well, the plants. What difference does it make? Well, people can get a bit pedantic, you know. So, yeah, I, I did other things then to create grow beds out of it. Uh, best way of doing it uh, to create the grow bed, and of course the. Um, Hydroponics taught me one of the most successful ways for long-term growing is ebb and flow, the rise and fall of water. Mm. Because when it flushes out, it, dra it drags out oxygen and CO2 into the root ball. Mm. Uh, and, and none of the others do that. So that's got a, that is the most efficient way. And of course, um, it also works very well for the bacteria in, uh, in aquaponics to, to live. So that actual bed becomes and would replace um, the filter that I mentioned earlier, the little uh, bacterial filters you can buy for ponds. It, it would completely replace that. And if it eventually become um, totally... I, I, I never had the aquarium. <clears throat> no. I never had the aquarium before I, I made aquaponics. That's why I, I struggled also a little bit in the beginning, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so the the whole thing with the bacteria that is also present in in aquarium, then. Yes, or it, yes, it is, or it should be. Um, yeah, it, but uh, you you cleaned out you cleaned out the the, the fish waste and stuff. Most and that... people, most people um, need to remove like a third of the water. Mm. Yeah, in an aquarium, they have to yeah. take out the water and, uh, and add water. Um, there are filters that are available. Um, the powder filters, um, and, and they connect to the particles in the water and then get blocked in the filter. Mm. They, they're used in industry a lot of the time. Um, and I've used those. Um, but, you know, the, what, what, we've, what we've done is we've, we've removed the wasted water that's being thrown away by heavily planting. By heavily planting, um, then you can keep the water clean. Of course, when I'm looking at this is from the fish to keep the fish in the best quality I, I can. To me, the, the fruit and veg are a byproduct. That's what they are. I mean, that's just the angle I'm coming at. I'm, I'm not coming at this 
from the perspective of most people who get into aquaponics, like yourself, Jabba, where you're looking at it as meat and veg, really, <laughs> you see. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm actually looking at it because... Uh, originally, and I see that's uh, brilliant, and that's where I'm going to go with it, and I have gone with it. But um, what I'm looking at is is the fish care. Um, you can actually give your fish uh, if you just you've got a garden pond by adding um, an aquaponics bed to it. You can actually give them a much better environment to live in. The fish's water they live in is like their immune system. If that water isn't brilliant, you know the best you can get, then their immune system is going to go down. That's why a lot of these systems use things like tilapia and stuff, because they can handle really dirty water. Of course, if yeah. I was to treat the fish that most, uh, many Americans and uh, other countries do in the UK, I could be prosecuted. That would be considered to be fish cru uh, cruelty against my pets. <laughs> um, I, I, of course, if I was a farmer, I could ram them all in a barrel in, in, in terrible conditions, and then I could say, oh, it's, it's organic. I, no, it isn't. That's not organic. I'll tell you what, then what I'll do is I'll take a thousand chickens, ram them in your, in your living room, right, and then you can eat them afterwards and tell me it's organic because that isn't organic. That's fish farming, okay, and that's putting fish under, you know. So you've got to look at the, the stress of the animal that's involved as well. It doesn't matter what animal it is, you know. Uh, I mean, I've heard people take it to the extreme that bees are enslaved. I mean, I wouldn't go that far with it. Um, but if we go down the route of using this to produce fish really fast, bulk, bulk, we're doing the same as we've done with the chickens. We're not actually learning um, that a natural environment, you, this is copying the natural environment. And in that environment, if you did that, you will get problems. So, yeah, I think we've got to be careful that we don't just slide with this back into uh, the mechanical farming of uh, fish. Mm. And uh, so you, in the beginning, uh, you only have goldfish, or you have also yeah. tilapia? Oh, yeah, they're actually all um, orphans, waifs, and strays. If I ate my fish, I would get... Uh, I, that, I can't. You know, that's... Uh, you couldn't eat these fish. They're all they're all part of the family now. The white <laughs> one. The white. How much? How much fish? Uh, how many is it? I think there's sixteen. I think maybe sixteen fish. I think. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you did the same since twelve years. Uh, I have. There was a couple of fish that died in the making of of um, um, Bob's backyard. Uh, there were several plants, and, and I think one, maybe two fish did die. Maybe one fish died. Um, yeah, um, the, the, there are fish in there that are the original fish that went in there um, in the original pool. Um, mm. One of the original fish is in there, uh, and the, what, a few of the ones that were added later. Um, the, the, the original fish is actually out of a bowl, uh, out of my daughter's bedroom. <laughs> um, so that fish is at least 15, maybe 18 years old. Whoa. Um, and there's others that have come like within there may be, maybe two fish actually came out of the bedroom but want to be a couple of years younger than that maybe maybe six, twelve months younger than that uh, and one of them is definitely they were all named after rappers she named them <laughs> after rap singers um, and the only one I can remember and identify is a fish that got trapped in the pump sideways uh, and it bent it at 45 degrees um, so I straightened it out and threw it back in the pool, and, and it's got a kink in it to this day. Um, but the shock of the ordeal turned it white, and it's remained white to this day. Of course, that's M and M. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only one I actually know because it's a white wrapper, you see. Um, so yeah, the rest I, I can't remember. I know they might have been. I know one of them's actually dead, but he's living in my pool. Is that Snoop Dogg? Is he dead? Is Snoop Dogg dead? He was the one that died. He did die in the early days. And, and, and when he died, Snoop Dogg was dead. I mean, it's really weird. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are rappers that have actually yeah, died. Yeah, that's, that's because he transformed to Snoop Lion. <laughs> oh, right, no, so I've got the wrong one then. I've got the wrong <laughs> dude, right? But, yeah, well, okay, well, Snoop Dogg's still alive in my pond, and he is still Snoop Dogg. I mean, if you want to meet the original, he tells live that. I can't remember which one it is. Uh, but there is a, a rapper that did get, get killed or he died. 
The two pack. Two pack. Yeah, two pack there. So two pack is alive and well, still lives in my bone. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if anybody want to see Tupac, you have to go to Bob's backyard. Yeah, but you can see him on video. He's actually on video. Tupac is in there. Yeah. <laughs> there is. He's, he's, yeah. Right on in the in in the Earth Gate, living out the rest of his uh, his life on Earth in in peace and tranquility. Yeah. Okay. And then from from your backyard, what what happened? Ah. Um. Well, the. Uh, there... I used to have allotments. I had allotments, um, and I give up those allotments. And this is prior to the backyard, and I was promised to by the council to take. I had three, and I was promised by the council to take on two more. And um, yeah, it was in August, so it was like about three months later. Um, uh, these were going to be ready, and uh, anyway, it went on for years and years. And I'm like, so about twelve maybe 15 years later, I don't know, I get mixed up with the times, but a long time anyway. Um, I met up with a mate of mine, Nigel, he's a mate now, I, I didn't really kind of warm to him there, but he was one of the, he hanged around, he was like one of the guys, he was always seeing him around, you know, parties and gatherings and stuff, I'd chat with him, but he was political, and, and I, I was just like, scum. Nothing against the guy himself, but he's political, you know, you know there's two things you need to do with in my opinion, the back then um, um, was the, the only good thing you could do with, with a, a priest or, or a politician is rub them together very hard until they set on fire. Uh, that was the only possible use I could see for them. It was still kind of strong. Uh, but, yeah, um, I, I've kind of learned over the years, like, you know, we, we've all got some of you know, and that's one of the things I learned from Nigel. I did give him a bit of time one day, we had a conversation, and it turned to allotments. And uh, I said, uh, well, yeah, there is a site. I've seen it. I've been to it. Uh, I said that. And he went, there isn't. I went, there is. And there isn't. I went, shut it. Why? There is. And he's like, no, there isn't. I said, I'll tell you what. What are you doing? I'll take you. I'll take you and show you. And he's like, all right, then. I went, all right. Then. So we met up there. And he was like, wow, they're here. <laughs> I went, yeah. Now, the, the oopy bit about it was not that Nigel thinks the council's lovely, he doesn't. Nigel had actually broken the council once before, but, you know, he, he, um, he, he, uh, he blew the whistle on jobs for the boys. He caught the corruption, in the, and they are corrupt. There's no doubt about that. Repeat, isn't it? Um, so, but Nigel was on the council at the time when the motorway went through, okay? That's why they, they'd put this new site there. And they, it, it, they agreed to put these allotments back, replace the allotments for the people of Ashton Underline. Because they didn't have any then, that was it. They'd gone, and there was not even in the. Uh, that was it, and they lost them all. So they'd agree to replace them. And Nigel, who was on the council at the time, now he wasn't. He'd blown the whistle on them. That had stopped. Other things had happened, you know. And he's now a member of. Uh, that was it. He was a Labour councillor um, in Mosley. Now he's a member of the Green Party. You see, um, still kind of toiling with giving people a, a, an alternative. So uh, yeah. Um, he didn't know. So he was flabbergasted. He knew again. He, he wasn't shocked at the fact the lying, cheating, thieving scum, because he knew that anyway. Um, but he was shocked that they wouldn't tell him. Um, and of course, then our further investigations, we knew, we found out when we went to see our local MP, um, he was fearful of his life regarding the area. Uh, at that point, it's like I walked into Hollywood. It's the nearest thing. I'm sat there with Nigel, and Nigel's got a recording device on, and I'm sat there. And it's like I wasn't there. Um, they, they discussed, we discussed about the allotment, and then the MP said, I can't do a lot, uh, although I support what you're saying. I can't. He said, it's the tipping. I didn't know anything about the tipping. There's been no tipping charges. There's no license. They've been tipping illegally. I can't say anything, they'll kill me. And I'm like, am I hearing this? You know, am I actually hearing it or what? I mean, he's, have I just heard this? And I, uh, and I just said to him, what, what, excuse me, what, 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 are you, what, what are you scared of? And he kind of looked at me and went, oh, um, um, no, um, um, it's just uh, the tipping on. And he, he told me, and it was like, he just really needed to tell somebody. You know, that's what it felt like. He just, 
he needed to tell somebody. And I, you know, I wish they hadn't told me. I wish they had a bit to tell me. I mean, all I wanted to do was go and plant a bit of fruit and vegetables, get on with my aquaponics and the uh, what I'd then learn. You know, within the, uh, excuse me, the aquaponics, it was hydroponics when they had me allotment, but I'd learned the aquaponics from the Bob's backyard doing that. Um, and I wanted to further it. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to get involved in one of the largest conspiracies, I suppose, Britain's ever known. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of tons of waste being dumped illegally right in front of everybody's face. Wow, I, I just, so yeah, we went and had an action day, like I say, we went up there and, and we did a stuff, we just thought, well, we'll do it, we'll try and point this out and, we, you know, we'll, if we can blow this story up and, you know, then this man, I suppose, he, he won't be so scared and he could speak out and stuff. So yeah, we went and did it. We went up there, a, a gang of us, Nigel knew people, you know, and, and we all got together. I knew a few people and we all rallied together and we're like, yeah, come on, let's do it. We'll go up there. And we told the council what we were going to do. And really, it was to push their hand and they didn't do anything. They just didn't do anything. They, they thought we were a joke. Um, oh, it's just a, a publicity stunt. Um, but then we took it and we'd done it. We'd gone up, we planned stuff and we, we turned over land and then the BBC wanted to know and the local radio wanted to know and, and BBC Radio Manchester and the One Show and, 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 and Look North West and all these people just suddenly wanted to know us. And I was like, what? what, what, what what's the fuss? It's never been done. I mean, the have been guerrilla gardeners and stuff, you know, done that kind of stuff. <laughs> Nobody's actually just gone up and occupied land with fruit and veg. Like, it was like, well, it's yours. And they go, oh, well, they come and take it. So, it's yours. Take it. Oh, well, what if they, well, what if they do? They don't belong to us. They don't belong to us. And that were it, Jabba. I tell you, man. Should have kept my mouth shut. Um, I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Now, all we'd done is affirm the truth. We'd gone up there and affirmed the truth. It, it was it was that simple. And, and, and inadvertently, we'd done it on national television. Um, so, yeah. That was the media explosion. Um, we're just going to make a little break. A little song. What do you think? Your show. <laughs> uh... A song called Last Chance from Moonrises. This is a public health announcement. Cannabis cures cancer.
back to Be Decoded on the Arc City Radio and uh, with my very special guest Bob, who talk about uh, from backyard, Bob's backyard aquaponic to the Dark City Radio. Uh, in the next, uh, we're going to talk about uh, Ashton, Allo <laughs> yeah, you have to tell me how you say that, Ashton allotment action. It's right, yeah, Ashton allotment action. What 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 was that? Well, like I say, this was um, the um, this was the allotments. Um, as I mentioned, the allotment sites, uh, this piece of land that we'd gone and planted fruit and veg on, where there was a tip. Uh, so the media have come, and um, we told them all about it. And you can go and check this. You can go and look. Um, um, you can find it on YouTube. It's 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 out there. The BBC One show. Uh, is that, is that one on the postcode lottery? Well, I know they're all the same. No, I was only in one of them. They both came, but I'm only in one of them. But hey, they both cover the story. And um, the postcode lottery, they cover it very well about the allotments. BBC spent the first show, it was the first one I did, which was. Well, we've done all the radios as well, and go listen to them. Um, Radio Manchester, the morning program on the BBC, and I, I, pff, there's a few, you know, you can find them. There's not one single mention about the corruption within the council, the fact that they, they changed, they tried to make out that it wasn't there, this place still didn't exist, they, they changed their website on the internet, and we've got a councillor like blabbing it on the telephone, we played them, everything. None of it. No mention of the tip. No mention of the council on any of them. Mm. None. Of course. Nothing. I mean, but ca ca it. can you explain the, the idea, the whole idea be behind that? I, well, I don't know, man. I don't really know, right? Um, I know my world can come from that moment, like I say, from that point where that can, the, the MP told me in fear of his life, basically. Um, uh, my whole world started to turn over, Jabba. I mean, completely. I mean, things I would have really, I would have battled with my life to save. Um, they've all gone. Uh, my family, you know, my, my, my grandchildren, I don't see them anymore. They think I'm nuts. And there are all these people who were with me at the time. All of them. Mm. And now they've all got positions with inside the council. It's fucking, you know, if I was a conspiracy theorist, right, um, and all this hadn't happened, I'd think I was nuts. I really would. I think I was nuts. And I mean, because you, you don't see the bigger picture, you only see the, your personal connection to it. So, anyway, that was kind of, like I say, we, we'd done it, we'd gone up there and nobody had done anything. And we get approached then by what they call, I suppose we now know as the fringe media, they call themselves the alternative media. These are like other groups that set up and pretend to be something different, right? And they're exactly the same. And they all then turned up, offering us all sorts. We had change and, and, and uh, critical mass radio and, and all of these other, you know, oh, well, come, yes, we're occupying, we're, you know, the Bat Protection League of Trag. Everybody, you know, there's loads of them. So we all arranged the thing and they all said they'd come up and they'd do it. And, uh, yeah, they turned up with their army jabber. It was brilliant. We put food on, you know. Whoa, we had all the tents up and uh, the army turned up. It's great. Three of them. Three. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's great that them three people came. Well, there were three of them. Anyway, you know, the, the, the people kind of try to get together and we try to make things better. You know, you make best what you can and, and you do what you do and stuff. And from that, well, one of them was a guy called Paul, Peter Paul Giovanni. He, he started this critical mass radio and he said, yeah, it's an outlet for you. You can get your message out. Well, I was like, hooked. I was like that big fish. I just swam up and grabbed it, dragged me in. Didn't even realise. Completely suckered into it. Um, so, yeah, yeah, we'll go and do it. Well, there's a few people around us who were, you know, they're, they're, you know they're good at what they do um, musically, and they showed me a few things, and they set me up with this Ableton, a guy called Daryl, um, really great guy. He set all this Ableton stuff up, lent me this launch pad, and we went on this CMR radio, well, they told us they got 60,000 viewers and all this, and it was like, wow, we'll, we'll do something with this. And these are people who, who were, like, turned on to what we're doing. You know, we've got, like, Roger Ayes and, and, and all them kinds of people, you know, the Freeman and, 
And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, these are our people, you know, lawful rebellion. Yeah, they are little, the land, yay. Uh, I'm not now selling double glazing to people at 7 o'clock, you know. And we're not turning up on the television at uh, 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 Friday night. And when we went on the one show, it was Friday night at 7 o'clock. This is prime time television in the BBC. <laughs> right? <laughs> Nothing. No, you know, I think we got three people actually signed up to the Facebook group and they were all from the BBC. And a lot of people, you know, <laughs> it's just like, uh, 6.1 million people, he reckons, minimum, minimum 6.1 million. So I, it was a bit of a come down, 67,000. But hey, you're talking to 67,000 people that, you know, you're on with. Mm. So, uh, yeah, we had a go at it. We had a go at it. Um, and uh, uh, and from from there you you start to make also the 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 radio shows. No, well, that was oh. it. The the dark the, the critical mass radio. That was the first radio show I, I'd done where I kind of went out and we set up like I say, sang samples and we did our first show on critical. And mass. and what was the subject of the? I, oh, the, the, I think it was about the allotments to be honest, because that's what we we're on about. But mm -hmm. we, were a bit, we were a bit zany. We were kind of we were a bit naughty. Really, you know, we did, we came in with the zone sound samples and stuff, and um, they were pretty much blown away. Um, now I now know that that they, they still they were still, they still caught that sixty seven thousand, and the, the I don't know if it was the first or the second or the third show, but uh, we did. I think we we only did four. Um, we paid um, for more than that. Um, uh, we paid. I give um, uh, Paul Giovanni half a half ounce of skunk. Um, that's how I paid him. Uh, <laughs> great, isn't it? You see, I've been I've been growing cannabis in my house for a number of years. The police knew about it. Everybody knew about it. It wasn't a problem. Uh, after I'd actually, uh, I'd been raided at my house uh, by gangsters, and the CID knew what I was doing. The head of CID, um, and they were like, "Look, they, they didn't want. They knew there was big problems brewing. Um, they've got gangs going round dressed as the police." Um, robbing people, torturing them, um, and people weren't reporting it. Right, I, we knew it was happening, but people were too scared to report it. And when they came to my house, I fought them. I mean, I got beat up. I'm not disputing that. I got beat up, but you know, they went. They got they fought. They went. You know, that were it. Kind of. I don't think they expected to find a naked area ass bloke running around the house. Right. <laughs> who, who, who just kept throwing himself at him when they beat me to the ground. I mean, there was no hero. I just flew. I just kind of dived at him and they knocked me to the ground. But I, 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 was just, I just kept getting up. So, um, yeah, I took a kick in uh, and they went, smashed all the back of my house in and stuff. Um, anyway, the police come after that. Um, and uh, they were a complete ass. Uh, and I've had a, a, a case upheld by the, the Police Complaints Commission, the way the, the police were in the house, and that they just didn't bother following up the case. They just didn't bother following it up. They, just, they didn't take any evidence. There was number plates, and there was people saw evidence. There was witnesses and statements. They didn't really shock them, that, actually. But when was that? Oh, so that, I can't remember the exact date now when it was. John. No, but uh, that was 2010, 11? Um, no, about nine, I think. Uh, what, mm. uh, 13, is it now? 13, yeah, I think it's like, no, no, it'd be about, maybe about 210, yeah, maybe about 2010. It was, it was, it was right after the allotment action, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. So anyway, the police, excuse me, that had happened, the police, excuse me, um, and the police knew, uh, they, the gangsters had gone, and um, basically, they said, right, help us out, well, you know, right, I will, anything I hear, I'll tell you, fucking gangster bastards. I don't care. I'm not take them off the street. You know, I don't care who the, the cutthroat murderers are. You know, the cutthroat murderers. Uh, you know. Mm. Um, so um, we did the allotment action, and uh, yeah, um, my house gets raided, and all right, of course, the superiors within the the the, the Greater Manchester Police, okay, didn't mm. know about it. They didn't know about it. I mean, because, well, they wouldn't. They wouldn't sit in my house with me recording, telling me to carry on, <laughs> growing weed, right, and then raid my house for it, would they? I mean, they wouldn't actually try and make out that I've been growing it for, for, for seven years. You know, the evidence, you know, I've been growing it for seven years or something, and this, that, and that. If they'd been in my house and searched it for armed criminals, 
uh, less than 12 months earlier. You see? Uh, I mean, it was just preposterous. They, they, and again, I mean, now we know, I know now, that these guys who actually came to my house, and the, the, the police who raided my house, are all members of the same club. How would you, would you, would you imagine that? They all actually drink at the same bar. You know? Amazing, isn't it? Um, and so do the MPs who were involved. Uh, not the MP, excuse me, the councillors, the local councillor. They all drink in the same bar as well, as if we look at But, you know, the, what their superiors <laughs> don't drink in that bar. Oh, dearie me. You know, dearie me. And I learnt something then, Jabba. Uh, you see, when this happened, um, I wasn't in England. I wasn't in England. Uh, I'd actually gone. Uh, after all this, my, my, my wife and my family breaking up, you know, my home and all that, and all the, um, I'd, uh, I'd gone to Australia. I'd been to Australia for a month, and I'd come back. And, um, yeah, I, I decided to go and see my mother. I hadn't seen her for years. Uh, you know, and I'm kind of trying to find my bearings. There's a lot going on in my life. My head's all over the place. So I, uh, I went off to, uh, to Malta, um, to the island of Gozo. I got into the airport. I came out of the airport. Everything seemed fine. I thought, and I took a breath. The sun was shining. It was palm trees. I took a breath. It was like, wow. I got onto this boat, and I was traveling then with a woman called Susan. A lot of you know her. She comes on dark tea. And um, she said, she pointed somebody out to me in the airport. Um, <laughs> there's a man with bald head, um, with black she made you about his shoes. I mean, I don't know what it is with women and shoes, Jabba, but he was having <laughs> something to do with his shoes, right? Um, and I don't, I don't. So anyway, I gets on the, um, I gets on the boat and the little ferry to go over to Gold on, and my mobile phone rings. I, I take it out of my pocket, and this is a number I've got. I haven't given it to many people, um, and I'm, I'm told that my house is being raided. My house is being raided by the police. Um, apparently they come to my house because there's smoke coming out of my chimney. Um, they <laughs> entered my house under section 17 um, um, for smoke coming out of my chimney. Uh, of course, at this point in time, this is not my house. I've moved out. I'm not living here. I'm not living here. I've left the country. They come for me, all right. But I'm not living here. I've left the country. Um, so yeah. they just... They, they just went in. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, well, and no, nobody was there? There was. I'm not going to mention. They were, yeah, there was somebody here at the house. Okay. And there were, were tenants. I'm not going to mention who they are. You know, just, just I'm a name, too, but there was, there was people living here. And uh, they just they just basically forced away. And they forced away, in, but they, they, they came with the police. The fire brigade came with the police. <laughs> what? Uh, under Section 17, people at risk. They came into the property. They were shown the fire. Um, that, that's what was the cause of the smoke. That should have been the end of it, and they didn't. They went through the house. They, they, as what the solicitors, uh, and they, they didn't came in through the chimney. No, they didn't come <laughs> down the chimney. No, they came in through the front door. They were allowed in. They didn't do any damage to that. There's not a single door in the house. That's not. So they, they didn't break the door. No, no, they, they've managed to break every door, even though they were given access. Every door in the house, right, is now broken. All the doors used to fit. Now they're all not. Every door is broken. Either. The handle was broken off, the chunks missing out of them. They couldn't open the bottom of the stairs because they couldn't work out which way the door opened. They were trying to push it in, uh, apparently. For, uh, and there's no need for them to go. Anyway, they, all, they searched the house. They, they found radio equipment. They smashed all that up. They just wrecked. They just went through the house and what was described as a vindictive attack. Um, so, yeah, then they threatened me. I, um, they, they, were, they then threatened me. Uh, I was getting phone calls from people threatening me. I, first, they threatened me if I come back to the country, um, I'd be locked up immediately. And then it was if I didn't come back, they'd lock me up. And then, to be honest, I got to a point where, um, and they only had my mobile phone number at this point. And um, they were threatening me awful. And they started threatening members of my family um, and my friends. And uh, I knew they didn't have anything. I knew there was nothing you could do. I mean, it was all, it was just quite, it's crazy. You can't do anything. I mean, the best thing they could do was I'd end up in court 
defending myself uh, under medical necessity. Mm. What I didn't know is they changed the law the August before. You could no longer plead medical necessity because, well, of course, every case had won. And I now know that's what they do. When people win fairly, they change the rules. Of course. So, yeah, um, cutting a long story short, um, I, I told the police, I said, uh, uh, eventually this police woman who was just really vindictive woman, a nasty vindictive woman, and this was not just from my account, but by the solicitors and, and private individuals, uh, media, and of course uh, my counsellor Nigel Rowlands that entered the police station as my appropriate adult. They didn't know he was the ex counsellor of course. They just thought he was some scuzz bucket with myself, another scuzz bucket. So if you look at us eventually. But I was contacted by Richard Perry, um, solicitor who won the cases. And it was him who actually told me I had been attacked by the old boys' school. Mm. Um, and they, so, they fi finally found out who, who was the fake policeman or not? Oh, no, no, no. The fake policeman were never caught. I mean, of course. Mm. Oh, I mean, I'm not even sure to this day whether they were fake policemen. Uh -huh. Are you okay. with me? I really don't <laughs> know. I, I just mind the associations between people. And I now know that people suffer from very very deep traumatic problems in their life and they're not able to deal with them, that takes over people's personalities completely. Mm. I mean, years ago, uh, I mean, the old priests would have called this possession. They would have said these people have been possessed by demons. That's what they would have said. Of course, we now know in the modern day term day that this is caused through trauma in people's uh, childhood or, or, or in their youth, what's never dealt with. Um, you know, and that's what happens. That 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 side of themselves takes over the personality. Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah. Okay. We just uh, we just play another song and then we come back to the arc and how the arc gets built or imagined. Uh, next song, corn, uh, and then we are back with Bob on the Dark City Radio. I care about you, I care 
Be Decoded on the uh, the Arc City Radio with the special guest Bob who talk about the, how uh, the Arc City Radio get built and the idea. I, I want to know your idea of the Arc. What <laughs> is the Arc of the Arc City Radio? Because it's not many people think it is the dark that we are the dark city radio, but we are the arc city radio. The arc, uh, yeah. So um, what, what, what do you imagine for, uh, what the arc could, could be, is, and what it could get? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Because you, 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 when we start to make the, the, the website and so on, you... Yeah, you you talked about the arc, and uh, the the arc get built, and the, the arc is is something that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we we have already a arc all over the world with different hosts uh, who are coming together, the guests and uh, the 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 people who call in the show. It's yeah. really f from all over. Right. To be honest, um, Jabba, I've answered this question loads of times, and every time I answer it, it's different. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It is. Um, it seems to me that it's being revealed to me as we're doing it. So, you know, I don't want people to think that. Um, well, I, like I say, I can't be accurate about what it is. Um, and the arc uh, in itself um, comes from Dark City. Um, and the, the, uh, the program was um, that um, it was a bit like uh, Sam Spade, you know, it's a bit sleazy, dark, dirty city. Um, And uh, um, in the heart of the dark city, right in the dark of the darkness, when everyone fears to go, that's the real beat of it. Mm. That's what we've been trying to keep us from for so long. Um, I learned through what had gone on in my life and the breakup in family and homes and relationships, and friends, businesses, everything collapsing, um, that there is nothing truly to fear. There isn't. Uh, mm. And that gave me that ability to kind of sail, I suppose, um, like, like an art, like a ship. But it, 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 it isn't. Um, I heard a, um, a song a, a while ago called Babylon is Burning. Uh, I think it was by the Ruts. Um, and then a mate of mine, I, I really, I just, I just liked it. I didn't know it was like, and it was burning with, with, with anxiety. You know, and that's what set fire to it. Uh, and let the Babylon burn. Let the Babylon burn. I, I always knew that. And I don't know why. I just knew it. Um, the the burning part in the like in the in, in the reggae or the Babylon burn. Uh, the that is also like uh, at, in a time we had we had a lot of issues in the reggae scene uh, about the, the the homophobic and. Um, And that went very far, the guys, uh, because in in Jamaica, uh, when you burn something, then you uh, um, you don't burn it like uh, like you burn a fire. You you you. you it's like you, you, how to say? It's like um, a cleansing. The, the the fire in in the in the Rastafari yeah. or in Jamaica yeah. is like a cleansing of something. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, then it gets translated in other language, and uh, of course, uh, uh, when when they say uh, "burn the body boy" in uh, in, uh, in in Jamaica, and you translate it in, uh, in 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 other language, that means that you're really gonna burn the 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 the, the homosexual. <laughs> no, <laughs> and, no, uh, no, 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 no. Let me tell exactly. you, "bati bati" um, either means small or light in Urdu or Hindi. So, yes. Yeah, but they call they call them Batty Boys in 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 Jamaica. That is yeah, like well, the, yeah, the light boys, you see, light mm. gay, you see, they slag it off all the time. It, it, it's always put put there. Mm -hmm. It really is. So you bar a Babylon burning. So to me, the the it is now. I see it as the, a flame of of transmutation, not a flame of destruction. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see that that it's about throwing rocks or petrol bombs or bullets. I see it within consciousness. Um, mm. it, it, that's that's where the flame burns. Um, it, it can clear your mind. It burns your Babylon. <laughs> mm. Babylon's gone. It's fucking gone. You might have a bit of dust kicking around, you know. <laughs> But, <laughs> hey, 
Um, it does. That, that's its capability. It really is. It, it's not something that um, I then, in those days, was projecting outside to what I saw was the tyranny in the world um, from an early age, but um, um, to myself now. Uh, I see it to myself. I can't, I can't look at anyone else and say it, it, they are. Um, it's I am. And I know that the I is a big lie. You know, <laughs> and I've kind of learned that. So what, what, what is the art? You know, what is the arc within the dark? Um, well, that's the beat. That's the beat of the heart inside the dark city. Mm. Um, that's what it's about. It's not about our minds. I actually, my own, I suppose my philosophy, where it is at the moment, and this might change, um, is there are many minds now. Um, people have, have kind of possessed consciousness. They, they, they have a mind. Um, mm. Many of them, uh, all over the place, thousands of minds now, all active everywhere, all over the world. Well, there's only one heart. There's only one heart. Mm. What the mind doesn't get is the heart possesses nothing. The heart is free. And I don't mean this like pumping thing that pumps blood around your body. You know, I mean the center of your being, the thymus. I mean, when you look at it, I mean, you, you find out about this, uh, that it, it, it vibrates at a certain frequency inside yourself, and you learn about this. And, well, you don't really learn it. It's weird. It's like it was there all along. You just recognize it. You can't really be taught it. Um, you can be led, like, down the garden path to the garden, but nobody can take you in the garden, you know. Um, they all lead the horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Depends how thirsty the horse is. Mm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, that's how I get it, man. That's really what the arc is. Now, acts of, uh, uh, was it? Yeah, acts of random kindness, somebody said it was. Um, um, good Samaritans. You know, that's a personality disorder in the 21st century, if, if you wonder what a good Samaritan is and where they've gone. If you're looking for a good Samaritan, they're people who don't put their own personal... Um, Safety. They don't have no consideration for their own safety. If, if someone else is injured, they will go and help them. Then mm. Samaritans. You don't see this anymore because you know somebody putting themselves at risk to help somebody else. That's crazy. That's mad. Now, um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, it, 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 to me, that's what the arc is. Um, it's learning that each one of us is the arc. That everything is coded from within. Everything. Mm. Nothing out there that is not already in, internal or eternal. Nothing can ever be taken away. Nothing can be ever added. And there is almost, I think, intelligent design. I mean, I, I kind of shiver a bit when I say it. Um, there is. But it's been possessed. It's been possessed and di divided up. That is the mind. The mind we all share. We don't choose to share it. We choose to think we can possess it and we're in control. Where really we're not. And that scares the pants out of a lot of people. Mm. Desperately need to be in control. That's fear. Or what I know to be the gladio effect. It's not really fear. Mm. It's the effects of something that could have once been. Or maybe happening somewhere uh, it really isn't anything but the effects uh, that people have of it are very real very real they will they will murder they will kill they will deceive they'll lie they'll cheat or you'll be amazed what they'll do uh, i've learned to navigate away from those people as quick as i can mm. it puts me in oh, like we, we said you cannot win against the psychopath <laughs> oh yeah you can Oh, you can't. I know, how to, I know how to defeat a psychopath. That's really easy. I, I just don't want to. I, I'm not sure. We, you, 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 I mean, you, 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 can, you can get your own control over yourself to not get influenced by the psychopath itself. But oh. I, I, I don't think that the psychopaths, you, you can win against them. Oh, yes, yeah, you can. 
Yeah, yeah, you can beat a psychopath. Yeah, but yeah, okay, yeah. Then, then, then you have to use uh, psychopathic tools to 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 work against the the, oh, the yeah. psychopaths. Yeah, that that is, but that is like that is something that the kind people almost never do because uh, they 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 don't. That that's why the psychopaths are also like in, in control. How would they survive? They have no choice. They have to be psychopathic in their behavior just to survive. Yeah, of course. No, like like like, like we said, the psychopaths they are not really they are, they are, it's not it's not in, a, in a, to be mean that they do that. That is just for their purpose. It's not it's not a, Yeah, yeah, most of the people aren't like I say most people you come across uh, are actually uh, just following out the psychopathic tendencies, you know, to survive. Um yeah. it's all they know, you know, they are, they don't. I mean, if they were given an opportunity, they would probably attack you. They normally do. If you give them an yeah. opportunity, they, they, they'd normally attack you anyway. Um, mm. You know, that's what happens, one way or another. And they start having a go when you present them with a solution. Um, because they've invested time now and energy into the position that they're in. And they've given that value. Of course, but the oopy thing is, and it is really oopy that, well, hang on a minute. Time is a constant and energy is abundant. And once you grasp that, then the whole purpose of defending it is gone. There's nothing to defend. What? what? You can't put any time into anything because it's always now. And you can't invest energy in what's the point? Who, 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 who would you sell it to? You know, what's the point in investing in energy if it's abundant? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. You know, mm. it's like using, well, we'll use, we'll we use the leaves of trees for currency. You know, and you can't sell it. And then they've kept this shit hidden for years. They'd sooner have us all running around trying to work out who's buried all the shit in the middle of the town centre. People can't see it. <clears throat> you can't see it. I mean, if you put it on the television, oh, well, yeah. Put it on the television, people will get to know about it, won't they? No, they won't. Nothing will happen. Nothing. Mm. Nothing ever happens. That's the point of it. it never changes. It just goes round and round again. Over again. Mm. Yeah, like like we say, the roots the roots they, they have to be in the dark. Mm-hmm. They do. They do. And uh therefore uh we cannot say that nothing is growing in the dark because uh the, the roots are there. Um, yeah, ab 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 about the radio, right. tell us, I mean, um, well, the stream, the stream is, is, is part of the a closed loop system. The, the same as what I, how I see energy, uh, how I see how I should live and what my kind of way of life is to, is to, to the best of my ability, uh, not to create any undue waste of loss, harm, deception, breach of the peace. Everyone's heard that. Well, if you haven't, you should have done. Um, I mean, a lot of people say it's common law. I, I don't think anybody... I, I'm not saying anyone has to live by it or it's common at all. I'm not. Uh, I'm just saying the guidelines. You know, I've broken them. I've broken them. You know, like you said about psychopath. Oh, yeah, you can stop a psychopath. And the reason why I don't is because it, it puts me in a position I find it difficult to live with. Yeah, exactly. Not not them. I mean, if somebody comes at me again, but I'm a psychopath, I'll kill them. I, I'll kill him. Yeah, yeah. I've got I, I, I think I, I think everybody can kill. That is uh, um, no. I, I mean, remember, I've had five psychopaths in my house trying to kill me, and I, I couldn't kill them. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't mm. do it. I mean, that's the truth. I couldn't do it. Um, I couldn't. Uh, no, all, all, all depends on the situation. I think everybody yeah, can well, kill. Yeah, well, I haven't got. A, yeah, I think they can. Now I know. I, I, now I know. Fucking bring it on. Let's try it. Because the only thing that I've got left, really. Um, is the last adventure. That's death. <laughs> and mm. that's how I see it. Wow, it's just another trip. It's just another ride. That's all it is. I really get that. So, yeah, the radio, how the radio come about was um, we'd done another station and the same shit happened. They lied, they cheated, they said it was the truth. You can't talk about certain things. Well, you can talk about anything you want. Uh, mate of mine, Earth play. I, you kind of had a bet. He said, yeah, I'll say how long it is before these lot got sick of you. They're real truth. You can say whatever you want. Hey, he was, hey, he was right. They were a tough cookie for crack. Three months. Yeah. You still owe me $10, Earth play. <laughs> if you're out there, a remote chance. 
<laughs> so yeah, um, and that was Revolution Radio. We 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 discovered pretty quick guy called Phil Finker cracked it, and uh, that's how I kind of grasped about Gladio then. Real good people all them over there. There's no bad people. Don't get me wrong, but they are prepared to defend and, and lie and cheat and steal to defend what they've got. That mm. is not the truth. You know, that is not the truth. Mm. Um, you know, we presented something to them and they told us bollocks, fuck off, they're full of shit, made up stories. Uh, give, I mean, Susan got so much grief. I mean, unbelievable the amount of grief she got. Um, and there's no need for that. It was only, like you say, now I've learned about people with psychopathic behaviour um, and if you can't drive a screwdriver straight through the top of the head <laughs> and stay away from them. <laughs> Do you know, because really that's it. It's the only way you're going to stop these people is to kill them. And believe you me, you don't want to ever put yourself in a situation where you're lashing out at anyone. You know, abuse is abuse. It is. Whether mm. it's mental, physical, emotional, verbal, it doesn't matter. Mm. It's abuse. You know? It is. It is. So yeah, that uh, radio was launched, man. Took 20 minutes. We sat here. I looked at a mate of mine. He said you couldn't do it. I said, what? I bet you can. You can put two sound cards in and patch them together. And so from the beginning, you had your own server? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dark City Radio, it took 20 minutes. We built it in 20 minutes. We put it on. I switched it on. We put it up on a caster stream. That was free. Uh, we thought it was free. A bit naive, of course. Again, it seems to be every time I go in these things, I go in completely blind, not knowing what I'm doing. Thinking, right, well, we're not going to support any corporate. We don't need to. Why can't we? Can we do it without? Can we? And um, pfft, it just fell together, literally one piece. It was like, this is what you should have been doing. All along, look, it'll work, it'll work, do it. Stop thinking about it. When you see it, put it into action. Put it into action. Stop waiting. Stop having compassion. When, when was that? Uh, that would have been um, December. December last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thereabouts, end of December. It was Christmas. Um um, there was there was just a few of us kicking around then. Um, mm. um, I mean, I'm used to a family life and all that and stuff. And it was like, whoa, it was weird. And it was out of that darkness. You could so, so we didn't. We even didn't uh, celebrate a half year of uh, Dark City Radio in June. No, no. Well, yeah, it it wouldn't have been real. It wasn't real in a sense. You know, I thought we'd created it. I didn't realize uh, the, the, the depths and, the, again, what, and the complexities of making it uh, corporate free. Um, you know, all that people were saying, well, you can't have that. It has to be this and it has to be that. And, it has, and you know, I've accommodated that all the way up to where we've got. Well, not me. We all are. It's not like I say. It's organic. It's not me. But um, people have asked us stuff. And, I've, well, I feel like I've accommodated it, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that is corporate. That's not. Let's go with what's not. Let's go with what's not. And it has built the Dark City servers. They have come to that. They are, except for Skype, of course, that we're using. And more and more, I don't know why we are. We've both got Mumble. We should have used Mumble. <laughs> and we should be using it right now. You see what I mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it works. Mm, but lo and behold, all the people who were, who were telling us that they'd come if it was on open source and Mumble don't seem to be able to work Mumble out. It's too difficult. And we can't get there. And I've heard every excuse there is. Um, but regardless of all that, we've done it. It is there. It is The server is what it is. It's totally free, open source material. It's built on. All right, we have to pay a few slave tokens. I think it's about 150 max out. About $150 US, maybe 100 English pounds a month. And just let remind me, the only other alternative that can offer this 24 hours a day, seven days a week service is, is, is the cheapest, so I do believe, is, is 1,500. That's gone up to about 3,000. Lying, cheating, thieving, scum, really. Mm. Uh, yeah. all, all we're doing is, at the end of the day, is working for them. Um, so Dark City, the radio stream, um, it, it really, it was about breaking through that and knowing that we are all one at our hearts, and uh, whether they like it or not, we've already made fundamental changes to this reality. It's too mm. late. It's too late to bitch. Um, this reality has now been fundamentally changed. That's what it basically is about, uh, and us being prepared for those fundamental changes that are going to take. Nothing that can be done about it now. Nothing. 
And of course, this isn't destruction, as no people would have you. It isn't. No more than that flame of transmutation you mentioned, um, Jabba, you know, no more than that. It will mm. sweep in change, yeah, because you won't be able to possess anybody else anymore. You'll have to be yourselves. It'll come quicker than most of us. I mean, some are going to have to die to achieve it. You know, that they will. They'll actually have to die in the physical form and go through all that. Blah, blah. They'll have to. But of course, you don't have to. You don't have to die to get there. Mm. You know? And what what is uh, what 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 is your next idea for uh, for the dark city? That that uh, uh, what something that I know and what we what we I think soon have uh, uh, is, is the loop like the the radio aquaponic that uh, the water is coming back. That means that uh, we have all the files yes, uh, well, they, on the they, server they, again. Yes, well, I, I explained this. It's a, a few, it was really funny. I, I've tried to explain this um, to quite a few people, the, the, the conception of the radio servers themselves. Um, you see, the, the idea is, yeah, exactly that. Um, I tried to explain to um, people who are technically minded within computers, and, and only recently, I do actually think one of them got it. He said he had. I don't know. Um, but when I explained it to yourself, Jabba, You'd already done it. You'd seen it uh, within aquaponics. Hmm. Yeah, the, the the servers are built organically. The, 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 if one part of it is, doesn't look after another part, or it's put in the wrong position, it will die. Hmm. It will just die, and, that, and that's it. If we don't put things into the right order, it's not that there's anything wrong here. There's nothing bad, there's nothing evil. So things are in the wrong place. You just need moving around a little bit. And that's all it is. I, I see that within the reality that I live. Um, and yeah, the solution I saw was closing the loop. Within my energy field, I sort myself out. Don't connect to other people. Stay focused on yourself as best you can. Acknowledge it when you do. And the same thing within the circular flow of, of aquaponics. Um, it creates no loss. It creates no harm. There's no waste. It's only byproduct. It's good good solid earth you know um, and the same within the radio eventually there's no byproduct of course the dark areas of the dark city schedule are when it's free for anyone to use you know uh, we do I've endeavoured now to keep this this line open for at least 16 hours a day um, for seven months nobody noticed John Dark City is always live. All you've got to do is ring up and say, I want to go live. I want to go live. I don't want to have a schedule. Then why have a schedule? Well, why? Why? Because we, we need people to know when it's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know when it's going to happen. As far as I'm concerned, it already has happened. We spent this time. People mm. come together, Jabba, while well, I've been here, and they've been assembling those components. I've seen them. You know, the bits that were missing, like pieces of a jigsaw, are all coming together. Um, Many people think Rick Simpson and us going over to there with Spain was, oh, it's all about, no, it wasn't. That was already on the cards. We'd already seen it. We wanted to make Dark City real. Mm. We were going to ground it here and make it real. It's not like a city most people would imagine. <laughs> uh, no. And if you want to know kind of how Dark City looks, you need to talk to Vosto. Um, he described it once. and Everybody thought he was a bit nuts. But, yeah, he's pretty right. It involves working with the environment, in the environment, around the environment. And if you're really lucky and you get it right, becoming part of the environment. Mm. For me, that is mastery of oneself and all things. All things, I reckon, are a bit easier than oneself. If there's anything here worth cracking, if there's anything worth spending your time on, you or me, my case. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, it's just to give people a platform where they can talk the shit, man. <laughs> 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 you know, there's a lot of us out there to a lot of people. What I mean, what I used to say if I said I was a lunatic, if I was nuts, if I was crazy, I've been all over the world. 
people want to know what I'm talking about. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. No idea. But yeah, sent me all around the world a couple of times. <laughs> I, I can't complain. I, like I say, what 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 comes next? I don't know. We're, we're, we're kind of heading towards Spain, aren't we? Yeah. Um, that's what's happening. Um, there's a lot. There's too much, Jabber. I could go on about it for years. I could. Um, I think the best thing is to just <sighs> jump on the wagon. But get ready. It's not going to be easy. This. This is not going to be easy. I tell you, this is not. <laughs> as we say in Manchester, it ain't for pussies. It's for lions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, pussies are all right. You know, be a pussy cat. That's okay. It's a lovely thing to be. It really is. Um, it really is. But this is a time for lions. It really is. Um, we can't be scared anymore. And you got to walk with your heart. you got to walk with your heart. Not your head. Yeah. Not your head. Head won't take us anywhere but where we've already been. So, yeah, that's what I reckon it's about. Um, it's about uh, us lot and what we're doing right now. That's what it's about. How well, far we can get away with it before they shut us down. <laughs> 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 and the number of people, I'm telling you, are supposed to be good, upstanding people in this so-called community of the internet. Look out. We don't forgive. And we definitely don't forget. You can make amends, yeah, yeah, everyone can make amends, you know what I mean? Everybody's welcome on it. That's the whole point of it. Everyone can make amends. Oh, he ain't going to forget. You know, spitting his faces once, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. Spitting his faces twice, yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm. Spitting his faces third time, expect to get wet. And I mean tidal wave wet. Because what you put out is what you're going to get back. Definitely. Hmm. And that's why we're gonna continue with the radio and another song. Thank you, Bob, so much for explaining a little bit how we came here. And uh, and it's up to us. It's our radio. It's uh, your radio, and it's uh, to you to decide uh, what's the next step with the Dark City Radio because it's your radio. Oh yeah, literally uh, all they've got to do, Jabber, is ring in and they can go live now and they can just carry on. <laughs> I <won't say> <laughs> it's simple as that. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. And it's def I think it's definitely good also to uh, to arrange the stuff that, uh, like like you said, that, that not one, um, or like you mentioned, like the, the last days that nobody gets uh, uh, on overdrive. In, on the radio, that the, the everything what is technique or what is um, uh, that it runs on its own, like you said, that we just ring in, go on the show, make the show, and the thing is uh, technique work for us, and we make it that the, the loop keeps on, and that uh, the fish don't die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, man. I mean, we could actually go back in time now and start again from the beginning. We could literally just reset everything to the beginning and mm -hmm. it run for, I don't know how long it would run for, you know? I really don't. Um, but the reason why I haven't done that uh, previously is because of the file structure and stuff. We had to make sure all that was right. Mm. So, yeah, it would run potentially, I don't know how long. Before you get a repeat. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely a, a lot. And um, yeah, we, we just reached uh, 2 million hits on the website. And we have like over uh, 180 giga downloaded in one month. That means uh, a lot of people listen also to the archive. And uh, if we would make a rerun, I think we would have a couple of days uh, before... Uh, like you said, we start from the beginning. Uh, um, uh, oh, God, no. There's over 500 hours. Uh, yeah. When, <laughs> I do when I start to download the archive, it was heavy. <laughs> it's like 20 days or something, isn't it? 
Yeah, can you give it a bit longer and we can it'd be a month before the show and then you just top it up, we'll just top it up, start from the beginning, top it up, start from the beginning. Yeah, you sure will get rerun every month. Perfect. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome.